Greetings, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about a homemade air compressor. You're seeing a picture of a Craftsman Pancake air compressor. This is a newer version than the one I have. The one I have is about six or seven years old. I drug it home from work when I worked at the truck shop. Somebody threw it in a dumpster. And being a good pack rat that I am, I dug it out of the dumpster and brought it home. I wanted to see what was wrong with it. It sat in the garage for about a week or so. Then I brought it into the house. And it sat in here for about a week or so. And then I decided to finally look at it. And yes, I have a small workshop in my house. <laughs> that way I don't have to sit out in the heat. I tore it apart and come to find out the windings on the armature were were fried and so was the uh, points or excuse me brushes uh, which means that the uh, compressor part was kaput dead gone after I took it apart I realized that the electric motor and the piston is uh, all one assembly and you cannot take them apart so I decided to ditch all that part, which is the, uh, all this black part here on the top. And I saved the gauges and the pressure regulator, which I <laughs> ended up not using because I had to buy a different one. Now the, the following pictures are after it has been assembled. Sorry to say I did not take any pictures prior. So as you can see, I saved the tank. I had a compressor that I saved out of an old refrigerator that I had. And there's the bracket I welded to the tank. Then I welded this line to it. And uh, this is the inlet line and this is the compressor side of the line. Of course, I ran it into a air oil separator then I bought a new uh, pressure regulator valve to control the thing and this is after it's completed uh, this hose here is from a hose that goes in underneath a seat of a semi it's hooked to the air ride seat so the driver can have compressed air, you know, to blow out the cab or, or if you put a check on it, you can connect an air hose to it, a longer one, and air up your tires. It was, it was a thing back in the day. Nowadays, they don't do that stuff. Uh, this here picture is where I brazed it together, not to worry, that's just flux. I brazed the copper line to the steel line. Here I'm running tests, uh, and I accidentally put too much oil back in it because I turned it over and dumped the oil and put new oil in it. And this is just to let the excess oil out, so that's not not there. And there's after some more testing, so I, I left this little short piece to drain it. <laughs> it's yeah. Because this is actually a pressure valve, but I took the spring out and the valve out so it would, I could drain it easier. But that later changes too. Uh, here's a new control valve, and this is a uh, pressure bleed off switch. That bleeds the, this is the uh, head side. So this bleeds all the, uh, Pressure off the head so the electric motor will start. Of course, once it starts, this valve sh closes and then it uh, pumps the compressed air into through here into the tank. And on this side, the uh, new valve, uh, there's a 
gauge that shows the pressure of the tank and then this here is the outlet and this is the outlet side and here's the connection for the uh, air hose they anyway, always have air in here like if I want to block keyboards or a computer uh, or just when you wash something, you need to blow the water off of it, things like that. And this uh, connector here is a quick disconnect for my airbrushes or a regular air hose, like like you have in your garage. So I can like string it through the house and not have to carry this. Cause this thing is quite heavy with this big ass motor on it. <laughs> and this big red tube on the bottom here. That is part of the compressor. That's what cools the oil. So I decided to leave it on there. And then I hooked the electric fan to it. As you can see, here's the electric fan. And this was on the refrigerator too. So this is all old, old, old junk. And later you'll see that I covered this fan up with a box. <laughs> yep, cardboard box. Gotta keep the kitties tails out and the dog's noses out. This is just an overview picture. As you can see it's, it's got a, it builds air pressure just fine. It's it's slow. I have it set to, to come on at 70 pounds and go up at 115. It'll do 125. But I set it for 115. It's just quicker response in, in that area. Like I said, this is the inlet tube where the refrigerant comes back in. So this is in a sense of air intake. I put a sock on top of it. <laughs> hey, it's an air filter, right? Here it is sitting under my desk, and you can see the box over here. Yeah, if it fits, it ships. <laughs> if you're wondering, the bottom side is open. And this does set against the desk, so it keeps critters out of it. And it blows air across uh, this way to the motor. And this little lever here turns it on and off. This uh, works out pretty good. I've been using it for uh, four to five years with no, no issues. And there you can see my hose plugged in for my airbrush. And it does a real good job. Here's another picture under the desk, a brighter one. Of course, it'd been nice if I had some air pressure in when I took that picture. Or that one. And there you have it, folks. My homemade air compressor that I drug out of a dumpster. And I bought a few parts. The pressure regulator and the air separators and a, a few bits and bobs of piping and things. I think I had like $40 all total into the build. And it's still working yet today. As a matter of fact, I used it yesterday to paint with. <laughs> Although I am going to buy a regular compressor just for giggles to paint with. And yes, it's very, very quiet. Only time I know it kicks on and off is when it's, uh, the air bleeder pops off. <laughs> Unless the air pressure off the head. It goes, Psh! Anyhow, thank you for watching. Have a great day or night, whichever the case may be. Remember, be kind to your neighbors. You do not know when you will see them again. Or if you do. God bless. Take care. And bye-bye.